All right, so in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to access some alternative characters and special characters inside Adobe Illustrator. And there's a few different ways you can possibly do this, so I'll show you all those different ways. And also the fonts we're using, this script font is called Calafia Regular. I might have said that name wrong, but it's a free font on lost type fonts for personal use anyways, so I'll certainly link that in the description. And this font below I'm going to show for one other thing is called LC Black. That's a totally free font. I'll also link that in the description. So if you want to grab these before we get started to have them ready to go, that's totally cool to do. But pretty much any font that has open type features will allow you to do this. So if you ever check out the character palette at the top of the Illustrator menu, when it brings up all the different fonts that you have installed, there is a little symbol that looks like an O. And if there's a symbol that looks like an O next to where the sample for those fonts is, as opposed to the TT, the O means open type, the T means true type, the open type features will be available on fonts that are open type. So just keep an eye out for that. Most new fonts tend to be open type. And if you ever have a choice to install a true type font or an open type font of the same font, you probably want to pick open type. So up here we have this open type typed out in script. So a cool thing with Illustrator that they've recently added is if you use the type tool to go ahead and just select a letter for a font and then you hover over it, down here you can see there's an alternative letter that's in a little box. So if you click that, it'll go ahead and switch that to the alternative version. So now you can tell this letter no longer connects to the E, where if I go back to the previous version, it'll bring that connection point back up. So the same thing applies for the N. So this one has a swash that kind of goes up and to the right. If I highlight this N, you can see the alternative version right here. You can go ahead and click that. And what it does is removes that. So you have some variation to the way you choose to use your fonts and a little bit more control about how things are displayed. And to bring it back, you can usually just go back, highlight it, and click the other version, which should be available. And if for some reason that doesn't show, sometimes I'll change a letter and it won't show up the previous version. You can just retype the letter or hit Control or Command Z to take a step back if you don't like how the change looked. And an alternative way of doing this that's actually really awesome for getting a good idea of what a font has in total, you can go to type in the menu up at the top. And from type, you can select glyphs, which is sort of near the top here. And once you open that up, it'll show the glyphs for the entire font by default. So this is the entire listing of special characters included in this font. So as you can see, there are a ton of them with this particular font to cover all the different Latin based languages. But if you highlight over a specific letter like this E and then under show, it defaults to entire font, but you can change that to alternates for current selection. So if you do that, then it will just show you the two different versions of E for this particular letter. So you can double click on these to go back and forth between them. And in this case, it's not letting me go back to the previous one. So you can just go ahead and close that and control Z it a couple times. But the best part of this is, is that very quickly, you can highlight any letter you want. And for example, for this O, there's three different versions that you can click and change. This one seems to just have a little bit bigger space. And then this one's a tiny O. I'm not totally sure the reason for that, but if you want a tiny O, this particular font has it. So that's one way to very quickly see what a font has. And you can always switch back to entire font. And then if you were to move your cursor between a couple letters and select one of these various options that are available in the entire font, you can also double click those in and it will insert those. So that's a really quick and easy way to manipulate fonts if you're looking to do that from the glyphs palette. Definitely the way I tend to work, although the new addition of highlighting the letter and then selecting the thing itself has been quite useful. Another thing that's available if you want to go ahead and use this is the open type menu. And typically this is part of the character selection. So character, paragraph, and open type are all on tabs up here. But if you don't see this and you're using an open type font, you can go to window up at the top. And from window, you want to go to type, which is near the bottom. And from the type selection, there's a few different options here. You want to select open type. And once you select open type, it'll bring up this open type window that has a few options at the bottom that will be different depending on what the font has. So I'm going to go ahead and just go to my toolbar here and bring up the selection tool, which is the black arrow. So the entire font is selected. And there's a few highlighted options here that I can switch through using this open type menu. So this one that is available currently says contextual alternatives. If I click that, if you look at the N and the E right here, as I click through these, you can see the different options that it's scaling through based on what is typed out. There's also an option called swash, which if I click that, 
and you watch this T right here, it switches between a swashed version and the standard version. Another thing that this has is with 1A, if I select this, you can actually see in this one, there's something called ordinals, which if you click that, it'll just make that A really small and up in the top here, helpful for doing list items or things like that. In this case, the kerning's a bit out of whack, so you'd wanna go in and manually fix that, but that is an option that's available. And why I have LC typed up here is there's a special option for LC that's available through OpenType, which is called stylistic alternatives. If you watch the E on this one, as I click this, it goes ahead and switches that out so you have a different variation. So you can go ahead and check out all these different options, which are dependent on the font itself and the options that particular font offers, but there are a handful of options in this open type menu that you can just very quickly select a font and click them back and forth to see what changes it brings, and if you think those changes are a positive for the particular font in question. And of course, you can highlight the E and LC where it'd bring up the alternative, so you can just click that. Really quick and easy way to work. Same thing if you were to go to type and then glyphs, you can view everything that this particular font has. Not quite as robust as the one above it, but certainly quite a few different options. So as you can see, it's pretty simple to see all the additional characters that fonts offer. And this is a great way to make your fonts stand out, especially if you're doing things like having multiples of the same letters in a row, where you might wanna make it seem like a bit more naturally handwritten or not so repetitive. That's a way you can switch out individual letters or individual sections of letters to really customize this and make it feel much more flowing. But when you're using a new font, it's almost always worth checking out what options it has, what customizability the open type features have because it can really add a level of professionalism to what you're doing when you're working with your typography. But that's it for this video, pretty straightforward. Should you have any questions or comments about the video, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. And if you found this video helpful, feel free to hit that thumbs up button to let me know I did a good job of showing you what these things can do. And as always, if you're looking to see more stuff just like this, please subscribe. I do my best to keep creating new design videos just like this one. Thank you so much.